the final presentation for today. And then we'll take all questions to all presenters today. Thank you. Uh, Good after lunch, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Albert. Albert Mchunguzi. I don't know how many people can pronounce that name. Mchunguzi. We look at the C as if it was CH. I think that's how in West Africa people do it. Yeah, so it's Mchunguzi. And I'm um, talking about internet in terms of entrepreneurship. And a lot of people who talked here today talked about applications, applications, internet-based solutions, etc. And before I actually proceed with the presentation, I would like to say a lot of people in Uganda, for example, are starting internet-based initiatives. And I know maybe over 50 people who have started online catalogs. They come and say, I want to create a platform for people to sell cars. I want to create a platform for people to uh, sell their products, etc. But why there are many is that none of them significantly picks up. People start news websites, people start, there are so many internet-based startups which do not work. And maybe along the way in the presentation, we shall look at why some of those presentations, I mean, some of those uh, initiatives don't work. For now, we are looking at uh, if the internet is enough for publishers, that is, content publishers. So we are going to be looking at PC Tech Magazine. Uh, those of you who came early today got a copy. It's a 17, uh, no, it's a, yeah, 17 issue old publication. Uh, started at the beginning of last year and is released monthly. As you can see, uh, that was the first copy of PC Tech. Those days it was red and blue. Then we slowly by slowly changed this to white. And uh, the website was launched in January 2010. Today, it is one of the most popular websites in Uganda, as you're going to see. So our vision is to be the leading media organization which promotes openness and collaboration on sustainable innovations in three aspects, technology, business, and society. So we try to look at how technology affects the business and society uh, parts of our lives. And we, that's why we interview people, uh, not just uh, people, not just techies, but also people who are, let's call them celebrities. If you look at some of our past issues, we interviewed musicians, People who affect us, then we see how do they in, how do they utilize technology in the work they do. So how do how does technology affect them? And our mission is to create and disseminate uh, in print and online products on the same three aspects that have a global perspective, but are contextually related to Africa. So some people say your there is your magazine. Ugandan best. If you read it, it's not necessarily Ugandan or Kenyan or East African. It's sub, it's globe. It's a, it has a global perspective, but it is tailored to be able to suit you from whichever country you come from. And so, how do we utilize the internet at Visitec? We view the internet as a market, not a product, and this is very important, especially for the first presenter who was talking about the addiction uh, that people have towards social media. If you look at social media as a product, then you are going to miss the point. You're always going to look at if you need the social media or if you don't need it. If you look at it as a market, then you look at the numbers. The 600 million users on, of Facebook, the, for example, 500,000 users of Facebook from your country, or in this case, let's give an example of the six, now maybe seven million users of uh, social media in Egypt, which was enough to effect regime change. I hope we all know that Egypt has the biggest numbers of social media users in Africa. Um, yeah, you can Google, you can look at that, those statistics on socialbakers.com. So, uh, we updates to our website, which are um, well, 
several times a day are automatically pasted, I mean posted on our Facebook page. So if you're one of our followers on Facebook, you'll be able to see regular updates, regular news stories coming in. And today when I was having lunch, someone was telling me, someone, I, I like your, your Facebook updates. They are quite interesting. They come in maybe every hour, I don't know, but they are three guys doing it, so it's, it's, a, it's very active. And these are the numbers. Seven, someone said they don't want uh, to say over 7,000, so these are, these, are, these are the exact figures. We have 7181 Facebook fans, 528 Twitter followers. I guess when I talked about Twitter here, I got just a few hand, a few hands saying they have Twitter accounts. If you compare Twitter and Facebook usage in Africa, you realize that Twitter is still low. That's why actually even our Twitter numbers are low. Then daily page views are the average of the month of June was uh, 2383, as you can see. And that is a picture of our Twitter page. Still going through the numbers, we have 9,688 daily hits on our website. That's the average of the month of June. And 290,063 monthly hits, same month. And then um, over eight articles. I couldn't say the specific number because Sometimes they are five, sometimes they are 13, etc. And the PDF or the digital copy of PC Tech magazine on average over 18 months has an average of 842 downloads. But on the right hand side, you can be able to see the different statistics for, for the website, pctechmagazine.com. And the figures that I, was, that I talked about on the left can be seen uh, in the red, in the red circles. So, then getting back to the original question, is the internet enough? Here are the advantages. The internet provides an alternative to postage, that is mainly postage, which would be very expensive. One time, shipping magazines from Uganda, where they're printed from, to West Africa would cost a few hundreds of dollars as compared to the internet where you upload a, 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 a copy and someone just downloads wherever they are in their office, at home, anywhere. Uh, we capitalize on the addiction uh, to social media. If there, are, if there are thousands of people always logged in on Facebook, then we try to make sure we capture those ones and utilize and we capitalize on that that they are doing. Here is what I don't want to say the, the bad, let me call it the not so good about the internet. Online sales in Africa are low in absolute terms. So if you're doing a publication, if you're publishing and you're uh, targeting online sales, uh, you'll get very low sales. We had earlier last year, in the first half of last year, people asked if, we, if they could buy PC Tech magazine online. And you know it's easy for people to ask or for people to think they want to buy online or to pay for something online. So we put PC Tech at three dollars online. And between that that time and the end of the year when we removed it and we said no, let it be free completely, we had sold less than twenty copies. So twenty copies really at three dollars is you no know, is really meaningless in business sense. So we said no. Let us make it free to download and make sure we have as many downloads as possible. By saying as many downloads as possible, I'm saying we target to have about 10,000 downloads per month. Then we shall use those tickets to convince advertisers. Those will give you the cash to keep running the business. That is what Dr. Nongyo was talking about. First, you have to create the name, make sure people are People, one, they have to learn that they need your service, then they have to learn to use your service. Those are two different things, by the way. You come here and make your presentation and everyone will clap. Oh, that is very good. That can help us. Then, for people to remember that when they walk out is another different story. So you have to keep reminding them. So eventually they'll get used to your product and it will be like a disease. They can't live without it. 
So even if they are not going to pay for it, to pay for it, don't worry. Let them read it. Then you will tell whoever is ready to pay the money, or whoever is ready to talk to the readers that you have. You tell them, okay, now me, I'm reaching two million people per day. Don't you want to be part of that? Definitely, they'll give you the money, and that's what you need. Uh, there's also someone we had a presentation from a Google ambassador talking about the Google products and Google AdSense is one of them. Uh, I am not quite sure about how much Google charges for advert placements. Of course, the reason I'm not sure is that there are different packages. If you want text, if you want an image, if you want it to be displayed whichever number of times per day, etc. But generally, if you compare adverts online and adverts in print, you find that the revenue you can make from them is quite significantly different. We, will, we can have a hard time convincing people, advertisers, to pay for adverts online on a website, even though you can prove to them that it has more impressions. By impressions, I mean views per day uh, compared to the uh, print version. Think about it. If you print, if you produce 2,500 magazines a month, that is printed magazines a month, and let's say each magazine uh, is sold to, and you sell all of them, 2,500, then someone takes the magazine home and he has a family of five, they read it, including family and friends, that one single magazine is read five times. So the total number of uh, impressions, views on each page of that magazine is a maximum of 2,500 times 5, which is about um, 7,000, 7, yeah, about 7,500. Now, 7,500, if you compare it to the, remember the hits we saw? 29,000 views on daily views, I mean monthly views online. You find that the website has way more impressions or may more views than what people look at physically. The trick is you can if you try to convince that to the current people who call the shots, the people in the businesses, you tell them that online you have more views. They can't believe you because they want something they can feel. That's a challenge we still have to address because the mentality at the back of people's minds is still at least in Africa they still want to touch it. You want to touch it, that's when they'll be able to pay. Um, I think we have about two advertisers on the website only, and the amount they pay us can't even uh, equal one full page in the magazine. That is the trick. If you're going to be online business, you have to bear that in mind. And it does not just affect us here in Uganda, even if you're doing, um, uh, if you're using products like Google AdSense, you need to be having a lot of traffic. To get a lot of traffic, you need to be outside Africa. Because in Africa, if you look at the number of internet users, it's very low compared to the total population. I don't know how much the researchers will tell us exactly what the figures are there. But we implemented Google AdSense, the product I was talking about earlier. And we we're trying to see if it can help us because we said no, we have a significant amount of traffic. Our website is one of the most popular websites in the country. Let's see. Now AdSense, for those of you for those of you who have just joined us, is a Google advertising program where publishers of content can place their advert units on their websites. So you're paid depending on how many uh, impressions you get, how many clicks you get and generally the ranking of your website. Um, we found that we concluded that to be able to make serious revenue from your website, if you're running Google AdSense, it needs to be, you need to be having millions of impressions. That's a trick for Google because if they sell, if they sell 5,000 impressions on my website, they'll give me, they will only pay me the first check if I get $100. So when your revenue accumulates to $100, that's when they pay you a check. 
So it means there are millions of publishers in Africa who are running Google programs. And the advertisers themselves are paying Google. If there's any Google ambassador, this is the fact about Google. If I am running a website, for example, a personal blog, and I make about 500 impressions per day, when Google calculates a day they realize they are supposed to give me zero point two dollars, at the end of a year, I have twenty three dollars. I once did that, so um, there's a, pro a, a website I was running in two thousand eight, which after two years of running Google AdSense, I had twenty three euros. After two years, now the advertisers have been charged and they have paid, but someone will never claim their money because they have never got a hundred dollars. And that's how Google makes money. You know, there are millions of people, millions of website owners who never get money from Google because they never get $100. Now, those are some of the challenges. So, <coughs> going to capitalize on adverts from Google or whoever, you have to first make sure that your website has traffic of millions. And how do you get millions of uh, users? Let me just use an example of Yahoo.com. Uh, a few years ago, Yahoo and Hotmail used to be the only websites that were providing free email that people knew. So, assume you're running Yahoo.com and uh, Yahoo.com has one billion email accounts and there is an advert placement on every, every time someone opens, clicks new mail, there's a line of an advert somewhere. Now, assuming of the one billion users, um, Half of them check their Yahoo mail per day, so you have 500 million users per day who are accessing Yahoo mail. If they open just one email and saw one advert, it means Yahoo.com or Yahoo mail would sell uh, 500 million impressions per day just from one email. And if the advertiser was to pay 0.00. .00 uh, dollars per impression, that is 0 .0, 1 out of 100 dollars. It means Yahoo would make 5 million dollars per day from just impressions. What am I talking about? It's a game of numbers. You have to have the numbers. So, whatever product you're running, first focus on how you're going to get the numbers. And if you get those numbers, you will, whatever program you Whatever, let me call it, whatever value-added service you implement, you make money from it. But before you get significant numbers, uh, plan to have something running on the side so that you can, you can sustain your initiative up to when you start make, making money. Now that's uh, a tip for those of you who are running online products. Yeah, that's the same conclusion I was making. The internet alone isn't enough to facilitate technology reporting. That's basically how I remember I was thinking about publishers. So it's not enough to facilitate technology reporting. It's convenient for dissemination of information, but not yet enough to sustain business financially. That is in Africa. So the tips for recommended model for publishers, uh, you have to offer free stuff online. Someone talked about that. You have to offer free stuff online to attract your readership. Free stuff, you are talking about um, free downloads, for example. There are a lot of free software online that you provide. Two, you have to focus on uh, professional content. You have to write something people are interested in. Uh, you have, see, PC Tech is free to download. That's offering free stuff. And that's how you get the numbers. Then you use the numbers to convince advertisers to pay money for advert placements in the print edition. Thank you very much.